All right, let's jump to this first story. We got this from the Post Millennial. Breaking Portland jury finds Antifa militants not liable in Andy No attack. Defense attorney declares, I am Antifa. The defendant's attorney told the jurors their faces will be remembered. I want to show you this tweet. Uh, so this is the postman that says Andy No was harassed this morning on his way into court by alleged members of Antifa. The jury told the judge that they are concerned about being doxxed and said that people are trying to find out who they are. This is the current state of American politics in these cities. You have a defense attorney who tells the jurors, I will. Here, here you go. Bur Burroughs told the jurors that she will remember each one of their faces. Burroughs not take the time to provide evidence as to why the two defendants should be free from charges, but rather use the time to defend anti-fascism and attack No's credibility as a journalist. So the trial, for those that are, uh, for, uh, are not familiar, is these alleged Antifa members who had assisted in, one, in the brutal attack outside of a hotel, had uh, provided support to other, other individuals who are accused of, of violently attacking him, and one of the individuals admitted to actually physically attacking Andy No on one occasion. The jury reached a verdict in the case of Andy No versus Rose City Antifa, in which they found both defendants, John Colin Hacker and Elizabeth Renee Richter, not liable in the civil case brought against them. Now, I will say, I don't know the full details of, you know, how everything was laid out, but I will call out absolutely when you have a defense attorney telling the jurors who are terrified of Antifa that they're going to remember their faces. Is that during the trial? Yes. That's got to be juror intimidation. I thought Antifa was a, an idea. Uh, but it that's turns out this idea has attorneys. Well, that's the argument they made. They made that we're not part of an organization. We are just anti-fascists. You know, we, we had sued. Uh, we had tried to get documents about an Antifa member who was, uh, I guess, had beaten up someone. And she was a teacher. So we wanted documents about what was going on at the school. And, and Antifa intervened. Uh, they had lawyers. We spent a lot of time fighting. And she got sanctioned uh, for doing this. And, and not only is it, obviously an organization uh but on top of this defense lawyer doing something which is exceedingly improper i, I don't understand how you know could got, could have gotten a fair trial here you had remember they had to clear the courtroom the court stopped letting the public in because antifa was showing up and engaging in violent outbursts so you know would you what would you do if you were a juror you'd probably think you know i got a wife and family i got kids at home or whatever I'm getting out of here and uh, finding them, you know, not guilty or or not liable is what, an easy way out. What do you do in the case where it does appear that there's intentional uh, juror intimidation? What do you do if a judge isn't doing their job and intervening to defend them? Like what happens in that case? You know, I'm no lawyer, but uh, my guess is there there could be something you would could appeal here. Mm. that there was improper, uh, you know, he didn't get a proper trial given the threats of violence directed at the jury and the, and the disruption of the court, which yeah. which obstructs justice as well. It's an interesting case. It seemed to be a straightforward, you know, assault case. I'm not quite sure why the jury found the is, way he is did. Is this but, the same? You know, it could, there could be, you know, the, the, the liability as to how the jury had, what the jury had to decide, you know, maybe maybe they made the right decision, but uh, no way is, was the the appearance of a fair trial here. I see. So this, this, this civil order could have been like, it was a mob, it was chaos, he got attacked in the middle of the chaos, nobody intended for any of it kind of meant You know, maybe there was enough distance from the, you know, actual assaults that they could say I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't involved directly and the jury could have bought that. You know, but that's assuming that the justice was fairly administered in the courtroom and not compromised by the implicit threats of the attorney and the actual threats of the violent outbursts of Antifa members who were showing up in the court, it became so severe that the court had to stop the public from gaining access to the courtroom other than, I think other than media were allowed in. Wow. <clears throat> so when was that? How far through the trial did they start showing up and disrupting? I mean, this all occurred within the last week, week, uh, you know, week, seven, eight days, right? That's when I started reading about it. Yeah. yeah. That's jury in intimidation also. How long has yeah. his, uh, his trial has been going on since like at least July 31st, I think, because Kay Katie Daviscourt from uh, Post Millennial is uh, covering it and her, it looks like she started on like the 31st is when the trial started. I think, dude, I there's no way I can wrap my head around this. I mean, I'm getting this from the Post Millennial, which you know, full disclosure, Andy No works for. I think he might be part owner yeah. of the company or something, but I don't know, maybe he's not owner. Um, that it's it's almost like too bizarre. Like 
the the prosecuting attorney says to the jury, I'll remember all of your faces as if the jury's not going to crap themselves and be like, what do I have to do for her not to come after me later? Like, it's, what it's, did I do wrong? But but it's also the facts of the case. Andy No being like, here's a video of me being mercilessly beaten in the street on more than one occasion. Here's a guy who admitted to attacking me in a gym. I need help. Then the defense attorney looks at the jurors and says, I'll remember all of your faces. And they're like, oh, the defense attorney. Yes, yes. Not the, the def prosecutor. The, the defense, attorney, defense attorney. Then all then the, the jurors are watching these people mercilessly beat innocent people. And that's not in question. We watch them do it on camera. And then the jurors are told we will never forget what you do this day. The jurors are basically thinking to themselves, I don't have anything to do with this. But they're cowards. That's that's about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm just like, maybe we need artificial intelligence juries. <laughs> I can't take it anymore, this this juror tampering crap. Nah, but, arti but, artificial intelligence juries are not going to weigh justice. They're going to weigh- be hacked. It, no, they're going to weigh ease of ease of access. But is it is it cowardice? Because if you can't get a fair trial and you're living in Portland, it seems like it would almost be the prudent decision to make to just be like, look, I think that they're probably guilty, but I don't want to have to- That's yeah, cowardice. Well, I, it's cowardly, but also what, it's what, prudent. Yeah. Is it not? Like- would you? No, it's not. Well, was the jury short, was short the, term gains? You, you're sacrificing your future, your neighbor's future, your children's future for what? A few moments of well, I'll put it this way. Those who would give up essential liberties for freedom for for a small amount of security right. deserve neither and will lose both. Yeah, well, I, I think that's fair. But I, I'm saying if you're in a position where you're already not able to get a fair trial in a case like this, it's kind of just time to leave. It's I agree. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who say, like, I can't leave. I have kids and I can understand and respect that. And I respect people saying, I'm going to stay here and try and push back. But if you're on this jury. Yeah, you should still cast the proper vote. I agree. Yeah. Don't be a coward. Yeah. You know, and I then think... if you're going to leave anyway, be like, nah, I'm going to find them liable. I'm going to get get out. Look at this. Donald Trump's found liable for an for an, for a sexual assault 30 years ago in the biggest department store in the country, in, in, this, in the country, probably where nobody saw him. The most famous guy in New York walks in a building. None of the story makes up, makes sense. And these people in New York are like, yeah, screw it. He's liable. And then Andy Noe is on camera being chased and beaten by people. And they're like, nah, not these guys. One of the guys outright said, yeah, I was at a gym. I poured water on him and hit his phone out of his hand. And they're like, nah, you're fine. Crazy. But Donald Trump, oh, you got it. You got it. You got to get him. You know, my view is that uh, were the, was the jury sufficiently protected given the fact that Antifa is a terrorist organization? Apparently and, they and, said and, they were terrorists. And if Al-Qaeda was in a trial or right. a terrorist group was in a trial, I think there would be a lot more security and protection for the jury and less tolerance from the court. But Antifa, we've been told time and time again, is, quote, anti-fascist and, you know, they're doing the Lord's work when, in fact, uh, you know, they're, they're communist revolutionaries that kill people. And 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 um, beat them up if they get in the way, and uh, so I don't I don't see how Andy got a fair trial here. Uh, you know, we can argue about whether the jury should have found guilty, uh, you know, liable or not liable, but in the end, that result has been compromised, and you can't trust the results. So there, we'll see what happens. If there's you can't. I don't think you can trust. Uh, I mean, it, it's difficult for people to to trust the courts at all nowadays. I think. You know, whether it be Andy's situation or the police officer that just got sentenced to whatever, five years or four years of yeah. prison for, for just being on the scene of the uh, the George George Floyd uh, situation. Just yeah. just for being there, he got he got charged. And, and I honestly so, wasn't at all certain that the Rittenhouse case was going to go the right direction. So, yeah, I mean, know, I, I don't I don't have any. Thankfully, faith. I'm, thankfully, you're, I agree. I don't have any faith either. But but yeah, I mean, the, there have been a lot. There are so many court cases that have gone the wrong way like especially in the past you know five years or so and i think that it's likely that he, that trump is going to be found guilty on something i think with all the all the stuff that uh, he's gonna be found guilty on all that, of it well i mean fair enough but you know so and they're all real thin charges so i i, I don't have a whole lot of Faith in, ju in the judicial judicial system if, anymore. If, if he's found guilty on all of them, Tim, do you think we actually see Donald Trump in prison? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I, I give me a scenario where Trump is not going to prison. What do you What do you think, Tom? Um, I think the odds are significant. I don't think it's they're they're over fifty that he's found guilty and and, you, and you, is you, sentenced to prison. Whether he goes to prison or not. I, I think that would be pretty extraordinary. And certainly it's not, I don't think it's going to happen before the election, although up in DC here, 
uh, I think that judge is angling to get that trial done before the end of the year. So I, th I think it's fair to say it's unprecedented and perhaps there will be a house arrest circumstance or something to that effect. Yeah. He's with Secret Service. He'll be confined to Mar-a-Lago. Who knows? I think that proves it's BS, right? Any Anybody who's convicted of trying to overthrow the United States, the United States government, would, would face very, very extreme and severe charges, like remand in a military detention facility. Right. Donald Trump is like, you're free to go. You know, we'll see about it because all they're trying to do is jam up his, his chance at re-election. And they don't want to piss off his followers because if they did put him in jail without charge or trial, you'd have people on the street breaking stuff at the moment. Well, that, that's what I'm so concerned about is like, I tend to agree with Tim that the prosecution and the conviction, in my opinion, seems more likely than not. But I can't envision what America and his supporters look like and react with if that transpires, either before or after the election. I don't know what I don't know what this country looks like. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.